So for 20 years, so many of us have been in the trenches trying to fight this scourge of extremism within my faith community of Islam. And so what I'm so happy about is the idea that we're going to be working together. You know, I really enjoy the idea of a strategy for our group of individual fighters. We're all in the, these different trenches, and it's so important that we have a global strategy working in the same direction. And the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to is winning. So my own, uh, my own struggle against the idea of extremism within my faith community, you know, began as a girl because I saw inequity as a girl growing up within my community. I saw the boys did fewer chores; they got to enjoy society more. But I didn't fight for this until. I had this pivotal moment, January 23rd, 2002, and that was the day that a colleague of mine from the Wall Street Journal and a dear, dear friend, Danny Pearl, walked out of a home that I had rented in Karachi, Pakistan, and he went into a taxi and he never came back. He was kidnapped and then murdered brutally by extremists from within my faith. And it was at that moment that I knew that my life mission was to fight that interpretation of Islam that justified his murder. So it's been a long, long battle. I also, I brought back, as uh, my niece says, a souvenir from Pakistan. I learned during Danny's kidnapping that I was pregnant. I had a boyfriend who was Muslim and uh, I wasn't married. And I had to face this very personal choice of whether I was going to accept the interpretation of Islam that I was a criminal and that I should live in shame for the rest of my life because I dared to become pregnant without a wedding ring. But it was my parents who told me that God is forgiving and God is loving and they welcomed both myself and my son home and I've been able to raise him at these 20 years with a sense of love and not shame. And I know very personally then how you can just change the direction of not only your own life, but somebody else's life when you accept uh, interpretation of faith that is one of grace and kindness and love. And, and that's really been my mission these last two decades. I've been fighting for as long as my son has been alive. and uh, and. It's a battle that I think will continue, you know, till the next 20 years also, but I absolutely know that we can win it. So I think what happens is because of language, geography, and just the, you know, busyness of our own lives, we don't know how many others are fighting the same battle that we're waging. And it has been just so uplifting and heartwarming for me to meet our other revolutionaries, really, in France, from Belgium, from around the world, who are waging the battle in their languages, in their communities. And the biggest, most exciting thing that I want to take is the, the community message that we've got to the world. You know, now that I have gotten to know them, I want everyone else that I know to know them also. And that's what I think we can accomplish.